Amid the hallowed peaks of Mount Olympus, a realm gleamed with divine purity and athletic grace. There existed a figure shrouded in more than just the soot and grime of his primordial furnace. Hephaestus, known as the Celestial Artificer, was the stark antithesis of the Olympian aesthetic, an ugly god, malformed from his very birth, bearded and lamed, yet unmatched in his craft. Among deities revered for their unblemished forms, he stood out, not for beauty, but for his profound ingenuity. Born to Zeus and Hera, his existence was marred from inception. Zeus, infuriated by his insolence during a marital spat, flung him down from the soaring heights of Olympus, casting him into the mortal realm. A fall shatters both body and spirit. Some whisper it was Hera's loathing of her ugly offspring that led to this cruel descent. Among mortals, Hephaestus was a tragic sight, crippled yet endlessly resilient. Rescued by the sea nymphs Thetis and Eurynome, who took pity upon his wretched state, he was concealed in a grotto beneath the ocean's expanse for nine long years. Here his hands found solace in creation. The raw or that earth disgorged was his medium, the relentless fire his only companion. But solace was fleeting, for the specter of vengeance subtly stewed within him. Emerging from exile, Hephaestus did not seek forgiveness but reprisal. A golden throne, an apparent token of reconciliation, was offered to Hera. Magnificent yet deceptive, it ensnared her the moment she reclined in its delicate embrace. Efforts of the other gods to free her proved fruitless, dwarfed by the cunning of its creator. Only when Dionysus, the god of revelry, intoxicated him, did Hephaestus relent. Released but humbled, Hera could do little but accept the irony. Her despised son outclassed her in wit. In the cavernous depths of his workshop beneath Mount Etna, Hephaestus' genius knew no bounds. Here, he crafted automata, golden maidens capable of thought, speech, and service. Among these wonders stood bronze hounds, patrols of unerring vigilance, and Talos, a colossal sentinel of Crete. His creations were not solely constructs of beauty, but also of strife. The shield of Achilles bore the world in its engravings a testament to his unparalleled artistry in war's grim theater. His union with Aphrodite, the epitome of beauty, seemed a cosmic jest, a cruel, balancing act of the gods. Her infidelity with Ares, the god of war, further muddied his existence. In a rare act of overt retribution, he ensnared the lovers in an invisible net, summoning the gods to witness their shame. Poseidon's plea gained their release, but Hephaestus' bitterness crafted more curses. A cursed necklace for their daughter Harmonia doomed her lineage to perpetual suffering. However, Hephaestus' brilliance was not confined to vengeance. His matrimony to Aglia provided him solace. The youngest grace bore him Euclea, Euthenia, Euphemia, and Philophrosyne, echoes of his more tender endeavors.